Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over the quickest and easiest methods for you to farm Stellar Terra Shards so you can change any Pokemon into the Stellar Terra type in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> The Stellar Terra type is a brand new type that was introduced with the DLC part two, the Indigo Disc, and gives us a whole new bunch of options on a lot of Pokemon available to us in these games. Like other Terra types, it's something you can change on any Pokemon in the game, but does require you to have 50 Stellar Terra Shards to be able to obtain this on any one Pokemon. Unlike standard Terra Shards that are easily accessible through Terra Raids, the new Stellar Terra Shards are a little trickier to obtain, especially in larger numbers. The main and probably most consistent way for you to obtain them is battling and either catching or defeating wild stellar terra type Pokemon that are available in the four biomes of the Blueberry Academy. In each of the four areas in the terrarium there are always three static wild stellar terra type Pokemon you can find and defeat or catch. Each time you defeat or catch one of these wild terra Pokemon you'll be gifted 10 stellar terra shards as a reward. So essentially you could defeat all 12 wild static stellar terra type Pokemon that are available in the four biomes on your map and get 120 stellar terra shards. That would essentially allow you to change at least two Pokemon into the stellar terra type. The wild stellar terra type Pokemon in these static spots can also rotate up to three different Pokemon. So if we cover one here in this video in a specific location, don't be surprised if it's another Pokemon entirely when you go into your game and you go to one of these areas. Now spotting wild stellar terra type Pokemon is pretty easy compared to wild terra type Pokemon. The Stellar Terra type Pokemon have a different glowing aura around them where they will have shapes within their glow rather than the standard sparkles we used to seeing around other wild static Pokemon in the likes of Paldea and Kitakami. It's also worth noting you will only encounter wild Stellar Terra type Pokemon in the Blueberry Academy Terrarium, not in Kitakami or in Paldea. The only exception to this is the Pokemon you encounter in your playthrough in Area Zero that are in hidden locations that allow you to open up certain areas after you defeat them. But once you have defeated or caught these Pokemon, they will not respawn. So they'll not be included in this video for us to be able to use as a method to farm Stellar Terra Shards. Now the static locations for these wild Stellar Terra type Pokemon in the Savannah biome, you will find three Pokemon here. Dodrea is one of these Pokemon and located next to the Savannah Rest Area too. You come to this area on your map, once you fly in, you'll be able to scan around the area and quickly spot wild Stellar Terra type Dodrio running around this area. This is the only one that moves around its location and can despawn itself like it does for us here. So when you do spot it, be very quick if you're wanting to get this Pokemon to encounter it so you can defeat or catch this to obtain the stellar Terra Shards that it does drop. Flygon is another one in the Savannah biome and is located to the east of the Savannah Outdoor Classroom fly point. Once you get to this location, you can fly out towards this direction and you'll soon come across the Flygon which will give you another chance at some more Terra Shards once you've defeated or caught it. Rookadal is the third and final Pokemon located in the Savannah Biome and is located near the marsh area towards the eastern edge of the Savannah Biome. But once you come to this area, you'll be able to find it pretty easily and either defeat it or catch it to obtain the 10 Stellar Terra Shards that it does drop. In the Coastal Biome, you will find wild encounters for Araquanid to the east of the Coastal Outdoor Classroom. And on the highlands to the west of this fly point, you will also find a Zangu or a wild stellar terra type Rotom. And the final one in the coastal biome is going to be located on the beach area to the north of the coastal plaza five point. And on this beach, you will find a wild stellar type lantern, although this can interchange like we've already mentioned with other Pokemon in this specific location. In the polar biome to the east of the polar rest area, you will find a wild stellar terra type Duraludon. And right next to the polar plaza fly point, you will find a wild static Dugon that will also have the stellar terra typing. The third and final stellar terra type Pokemon in this location is normally Lapras and is located to the southeast corner of the polar biome right next to the central area. In the canyon biome, you will find a wild stellar terra type Skarmory to the south of the canyon rest area. Once you fly into this fly point, get out to this location and the Skarmory is very easy to spot. 
If you fly east of the Canyon Outdoor Classroom to the Highlands area here, you will find amongst the trees a wild stellar terror type encounter for Haxorus. And below this area, if you drop onto the bridge and directly behind you, you will see a cave heading into this Highland area. And in this cave, you will find a wild stellar terror type for Electabuzz. Now, these are all the locations of where you will find the wild stellar terror type Pokemon in the terrarium. Once you have defeated them, they will respawn, but after a set amount of time. I'm not sure on the exact amount of time that needs to pass in game before they do respawn. But a quick way for you to be able to do this is to fly away from an area where you've just defeated one of these static encounters and then drop a save, close your game completely, and from here go into your system settings, into system, and then down into date and time. Make sure your synchronized clock via the internet is set to off, and come into date and time and move the day forward by one. Then hit OK, back into your home menu, and reload your game. When you're back in your game, head back to the location where you last battled one of these static wild stellar terror type Pokemon, and you will see it has respawned. So you can defeat it and reuse this method over and over again to farm Stellar Terror Shards very quickly. One method I like to do is going between two static spawns and then using this method to farm the Stellar Terror Shards very quickly this way. I head up to the Coastal Plaza fly point, then to the beach behind here, defeat the Lantern on the beach and then fly to the Canyon Outdoor Classroom and then fly over to the Static Haxorus spawn. Defeat that and then fly back to the Coastal Plaza and drop a save and use the date exploit before loading back into the game and then rebattling both the Lantern and the Haxorus before repeating this process to very quickly farm Stellar Terror Shards between just these two static spawns. You might have some more streamlined methods to doing this for yourself in game, but at least this gives you an idea of how to use this method to respawn the wild stellar terra type Pokemon very quickly, as well as obtaining high amounts of stellar terra shards very quickly. Another quick way to get 50 stellar terra shards is to fly to the sphere at the top of the terrarium. And once you reach the top of the orb, you will find 50 stellar terra shards and a number of other high cost items dropped around this area, including ability patches. Also, if you upgrade the item printer in the club room, to the Master Ball level, you will have the chance of Stellar Terror Shards being dropped as silver items through each job that you complete. Although these have a much rarer drop chance than the regular Terror Shards that you would normally get through any item job. And once you have at least 50 Stellar Terror Shards to obtain the Stellar Terror Typing on any one Pokemon, you're gonna have to head back to Paldea, specifically to Medali East and to the Treasure Eatery where you would normally change any other Pokemon's Terror typing when you speak to the chef in here once you do have that 50 stellar terror shards you will then see this option appear in the drop down menu and you're going to be able to give this to any pokemon that you choose in your boxes and just by spending around an hour in my game i was able to obtain nearly 300 stellar terror shards very quickly just by using some of the methods that we've covered in today's video so it's going to be very easy just to use these reference points for the locations of these static wild stellar terror type pokemon in the terrarium to just farm through them very quickly as well as making sure that you do pick up the free ones like on top of the orb and then utilize things like the item printer as well to farm these items but you shouldn't have any trouble at all getting the acquired amount that you need in game very quickly and very easily with the help of everything within this guide so that is everything friends i hope you found it useful do let me know what pokemon the stellar terror type is best on i would probably say arceus for farming reasons but we will have a best build for the indigo disc coming out very shortly and of course because we have got all the locations detailed in the video I'll go back and use that as a reference point if you need to pause it to go around and find these static pokemon around the terrarium i hope it is helpful for that if it has been do drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel as well to stay up to date with all of our pokemon skull and violet content and we'll see you all in another video very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye